welcome back to my channel thanks for subscribing and today on my channel we are going to be talking about my experience on doing Britain's Got Talent so throughout the couple of months um, I put up a post asking what would you prefer me to do either a written blog about my experience for Britain's Got Talent or would you like a video blog and guess what the video blog won so here you go uh, throughout this video, I will be talking about a few of my experiences on how I uh, dealt with doing Britain's Got Talent, my health throughout doing Britain's Got Talent, and also me being a mum while doing this as well. So in case you guys didn't know, I'm a part of a fantastic choir called Be Positive. And this is our branding. In case you haven't seen us about, or you have, this is our branding. Da -da -da. You would have seen these on um, Britain's Got Talent um, or on other shows. You would have seen us wearing it. Um, we were part of the National um, NHS Blood and Transplant Organisation. We were put together for them. I don't know if you guys can see this. And the reason why we come together is to help to raise awareness for blood, as it says down here, give blood saves lives. Um, and that is our awareness and also for sickle cell to help promote the awareness about sickle cell and why it's important for people to donate blood in order to help people with uh, sickle cell. And not and just sickle cell, but people with other medical conditions that need sort of blood uh, saving lives uh, treatments so throughout my video like i said i will be talking about my experience on how um i coped throughout doing britain's got talent with sickle cell as well so my experiences let's get on let's crack on um i have to say it was wow like i'm still on a high from it yes i know i've done it a couple of months or a month ago I'm still up there, still floating on cloud nine or whatever you call it. That is where I am because the journey was just epic. It was just an epic journey that I wish I could relive like every single day because it was that fantastic. Um, from the minute we knew we were appearing on uh, Britain's Got Talent, I wanted to shout out from the rooftops. I wanted to tell everybody, of course, it was something fun. It was something exciting. I wanted to say, guys, guess what? I'm on Red's Got Talent. Me. 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 Yes, me. Bogan. Um, but obviously we couldn't at that period in time. Um, it was a keep your lips sealed type of thing. Um, so and that's what we had to do. But the minute we were allowed to tell, I was shouting from the rooftops. I was tweeting. I was Instagramming. I was Facebooking. Everything you name it, I was doing. Making sure everybody tuned in. To watch us on Britain's Got Talent. Um, for my first audition, everything, when you watch it on TV, it looked so massive on TV. And when you're there, you're like, hmm, it looks a lot bigger on TV. But it was a, a good experience meeting Amanda, Simon, David, Alicia, and the producers. It was wow, an actual wow um, factor. And hands down to the runners that we had, like, oh my God, you guys, like, I don't know how you guys do it. I was tired even watching these people, like, literally, um, they was here, there and everywhere, making sure we were okay, making sure we were where we needed to be, the type of filming that we had to do. They basically were just running around after us and looking after us. So I wanna say thank you to you guys because it was like, you guys were wow, that's all I have to say. Um, throughout the whole journey, I made some fantastic friends. Um, you know, it it was amazing to see um, Callum, little Callum as well. Oh my God, he has a set of lungs on him. Oh my days. Um, you know, uh, from dancers to singers to actors to comedians, I got to meet them all and it was fantastic. Um, nerve wracking, obviously when you're, when it came to doing the boats and we had to stand up there and, you know, 
Alicia gave her speech of, you know, guys, there were a lot of people that we had to pick through. And you see, automatically you're thinking in your head, oh, my God, we haven't got through. Oh, my God, this is it. It's over. Um, and then to get the, you guys are through to the semifinals, I was like, oh, my God, did I hear correctly? But it was um, fantastic. Literally, they kept you on edge. That's how I have to say it. They kept you on edge because... You know, the, the suspense, the build-up, you're just thinking, oh, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Um, and I got to meet um, Ant and Deck as well. They're fantastic fun guys as well. Um, it was an honour to be in the whole experience. Um, I would have to say the biggest honour for me was doing it with generally people who I love. Um, my sisters are in the choir, so getting to share this experience with them and also getting to bond with the choir on a larger, bigger scale was even a bigger achievement. Because um, as you know, we came together about nine months ago. We were formed together and performed at the Mobos. That was our first ever group uh, sort of audition, not audition, but out there to the world that we are be positive choir and um, and from this whole doing the whole bt experience we've just gelled like this as a tighter unit which is lovely because the support that we give each other is just phenomenal it's out of this world um and i kind of asked to be a part of a better choir and our choir director or master should i say colin bums up even though he is a slave driver. Yes, I've put this in my video. I will subtitle it too. Um, he, you know, cracks the whip, but he gets us all in shape and uh, makes us perform, like, amazingly. And when we're on there, you're performing. It's just like you're... It's like an out-of-body experience. You, you completely forget that you have this crowd in front of you and you're just performing, and the reaction that they're giving you is that positive, like, yeah, go for it, and it makes you think, oh my god, I'm doing, you know, a fantastic job, and it hypes you up, it gives you the energy and the momentum to, to keep pushing for what you want to do. Um, the reason we why, you know, we went on Britain's Got Talent was just to get our message out there, to get people to donate blood, you know, get people to not just register uh, as a blood donor, but actually go and donate blood. Um, and also to get the message about there about sickle cell, because a lot of us in the choir do have sickle cell. And the way how we perform together, we you know, some of us are there in pain and in crisis, but while we're there, we just kind of pull it to the back of you and perform because it's a, it's a passion. We love doing it and we just, you know, we want to get that message out there just to get people to donate. You know, be a hero, donate blood, you know, save a life, just donate blood. And that, that's our, our message and our, our slogan that we are out there that we're trying to do. So how my health was throughout doing Britain's Got Talent. Um, I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, it was possibly a, between an 8 decreasing down. Um, not a rapid decrease, it was a gradual decrease because we were doing loads of rehearsals. So every sort of weekend or a week, you know, we had rehearsals twice a week. So we were travelling. So while doing Britain's Got Talent, I was also travelling to, um, Birmingham and different locations rehearsal practice there were a few days I did turn up to rehearsal in crises um, and I even had you know my friends in the choir and uh, choir director saying should you really be here um, no I shouldn't have but I pushed that to the back of my mind and I use that negative into a positive because I wanted to do it I wanted to be there I wanted to prove to myself that you know with spite of what's going on at this moment in time within my body I'm here I want to get this message out I want to get people to know exactly why it's so important to like donate blood and why is it so important for people to know about sickle cell it's time you know it it's come out so that's what I used that energy and the pain that I was feeling. Yes, I was on high painkillers at the time, but I just kind of brushed it off. 
uh, I went with my heat pad, my painkillers, my bottles of water, and I sat there. Even though I couldn't stand up to do like the dance moves or rehearsing, I was still able to vocalize and do like my voice warm ups and training. So I would say it did have a, a, a knock on and a bit of a toll effect on me, um, as I was due also for receiving my six week blood transfusion um, exchange program. Um, it sort of started to have an effect towards the end of doing Britain's Got Talent. Um, I was becoming to crisis a lot more. Um, I was becoming tired. Um, after rehearsal practice, while well, we, we stayed in um, a hotel together, so it was easier for us to transport to the studios of Britain's Got Talent where it was being filmed um, towards the live shows and stuff. I would just come back from practice and I would sleep because I was that tired. We had early morning roll calls and throughout the day, uh, while we were doing dress rehearsals or whatnot, I would be either taking short little power naps or just trying to recharge my batteries as I started to feel it more um, because I was leading up to getting blood for um, that was due. Um, did I push myself? Yes, I did. Um, I could say it wasn't the best thing, but I pushed myself. Um, it was that determination that I want to say, no matter what you've got, don't let your sickle cell or your illness stop you from living your dreams. You know, use that as a motivation to say, I can do it. I will do it. Um, I did listen to my body at times. If there were times that I couldn't uh, do certain things, I would take a back seat. Um, there was always a chair for me on site, so if I needed to sit down and rest, um, I would have that. And my sisters made sure I got like plenty of fluids and I rested as, as much as I possibly could. Um, and I want to say thank you. I don't know if you watched this, but thank you to the paramedic. Um, on our first uh, semi-final um, show, after I came off stage from doing a fantastic fantastic song well done um Lorraine you, that song was amazing um after doing that song you know I was putting all my energy giving it all because you know the the performance was fantastic and it was um done by the greatest showman this is me you know I was giving it I, I wanted to make sure we got that message across after we came off stage I literally sat there and I was like I can feel crisis coming on I need painkillers um, and I remember saying to our runner at the time, oh, I need some painkillers, can I go and get my bag? Because we weren't allowed to have our belongings with us. We had to keep them in the dressing room. Um, and I was like, I need my painkillers. And she goes, oh, we can give you some paracetamols or something like that. And I was like, nah, that's, that's not what's going to um, cut it. I need my painkillers. And bless this paramedic man, he literally dashed across to where the dressing room was, uh, came running across and bring me my bag. And I was like... Thank you, because if you left it any longer, I would have needed an ambulance to go to be escorted out of the building. Because as people know, and you guys know, from having a crisis, it can start this small and then progress into this big in a matter of split seconds. So from doing that, um, my health was a bit affected, but I know my body. I've learned how to listen to my body and I know when enough's enough and what I can do and what I can't do. So that, in respect, I was listening to my body. At times, yes, I would say I kind of like, was like, mm, can't hear you. But um, I always made sure I had painkillers on hand, heat pad on hand, and also my uh, water on hand. So if anything was to happen, it, it was there. And I had people who knew how to deal with um, myself when I got into a crisis, especially my sisters they would know how to help me out. Um, and also, from the guys in the choir, some of them have sickle cell as well. So it, we kind of bounced off each other and we kind of knew when people were having a down day or a bad day, it was, you're going through it and it was a nod of, yeah, I am. And it's like, okay, we just know, you know, to pay a close eye and attention to them. So apart from that, it, it was a good experience. But after Britain's Got Talent had uh, finished, the next day, I was in hospital um, getting my blood transfusion. I wasn't admitted. Please, no, no, I wasn't admitted. Oh, it was just my regular transfusions um, exchange program that I had rescheduled to after Britain's Got Talent. 
So as soon as it was finished and it was over, the next day I was there getting my um, transfusions. But throughout it, um, I was doing sort of like general bits of TV work here and there that you most probably saw me on the news or you uh, saw sort of like little V clips here and there. Um, those were doing in between while I was doing uh, Britain's Got Talent as well. And I actually remember doing the one for the news, um, waking up that morning and I was literally tired, exhausted. I literally couldn't push myself anymore. And they said, oh yeah, we, we've got to do uh, this interview for BBC News. Um, I said, okay, BBC Breakfast. And I said, okay, that's fine, no problem. You know, got dolled up, whatever, I went down. Um, and we were singing our anthem song, Rise Up. And after that, they were like, oh, you know, we'd like to interview you. And I was like, oh, great. So even though I was feeling exhausted, I kind of pushed that to the back and just said, okay, cool. Bright and bubbly and sparkly, uh, let's do this interview. And that I did. So when, guys, you watched it on TV, you didn't know that I was actually going through a crisis at that time of doing the interview um, on the TV. Um, being a mum and doing Britain's Got Talent, it had a bit of an effect, uh, I would say. it. I got to miss out on a lot of crucial things um, with my son um, that inside you have to make some sacrifices, shall I say. Um, and I did make a lot of sacrifices. I felt that I missed out on a lot of things that, um, you know, it was a big achievement to him. Um, and I felt that I was missing certain things, like I missed his football tournament that I wish I had gone to and, you know, I got pictures to see his football tournament. Um, it was a shame that I couldn't bring him with me to Britain's Got Talent due to sort of like legal reasons and him being under age, he needed a guardian to be following him around on set. Um, and I didn't have that time. So I did feel that I was a bit, you know, withdrawn for him. I was a bit homesick. I was missing him at times because we had to stay, obviously stay away. Um, some of the times while doing it and I did miss that. Um, would I do it again? Yes, I would do it again. Um, there are majority of things that I would do differently but I wouldn't change the whole journey that I went on. It was a fantastic experience and journey, one to tell the grandkids when I get older um, that, you know, Nanny's been on Britain's Got Talent, I did Britain's Got Talent um, and I just hope that this video and my message or our message that Be Positive Choir are trying to do would try and inspire and help other people and to help raise a bit of awareness for sickle cell and also for blood donation. So I had a fantastic journey and bring on whatever's next.